On top of being a really great 3D modeling program, Blender is also really good at rendering those 3D models. So usually we delete the camera and the light, but this time we're going to keep them. The camera is the view from which the uh, render will be taken from, and the light does what a light does, it'll light the scene. So we could go over to the render properties over here by clicking on this little picture of a camera, and Blender has two main render engines, Eevee and Cycles. So Eevee is more like a game engine renderer. It's fast, real time, but the quality isn't really as, really isn't super realistic. It gets the job done, but without being very realistic. Whereas Cycles will produce ultra realistic, super high quality renders, pretty much photorealistic. So let's go into Cycles. And you'll notice nothing changed because we're still in the solid uh, view mode. If you go up to the top, you'll see the different uh, viewport display modes. We could go into rendered. So now you'll see we have our scene and it, it is technically rendered, but it doesn't really look very good right now. I'm going to move the cube up and then go to add, add a mesh and then add a plane. And I'll just scale the plane up. So now you can kind of see, whoops, so now you can kind of see it's starting to look a little bit more realistic, but it's still not looking that great. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is break these edges uh, because when it's really sharp edges, it doesn't really look realistic. So I'm just gonna break them slightly like so using the bevel tool. So now we can actually, now our object looks, actually I'm going to, I'm going to break them, but give them uh, more, uh, make it more of a fillet by using the scroll wheel and, and breaking the, uh, the bevel, adding more segments basically to the bevel. Okay, so now it actually looks a little bit more realistic. Also, it's floating a little bit, so I'm going to move it down and set it right there on the ground plane. Okay, so how do we make this look a little bit more realistic? Well, we could greatly improve the lighting by using what's called an HDR environment background. Now that sounds fancy, and it kind of is, and it's kind of really cool actually. So if we go over to the world properties here, we could change the color of the background. You could click on this yellow dot, and instead of it being color, we're going to go to environment texture. And it turns purple because we don't have an environment texture loaded. You can find some really good environment textures on my website. You can find some free HDR environments on my website, 3dprinteracademy.com. Go up to the search icon here and just search HDR. And there you can see the free HDR lighting scenes for Blender. And just go ahead and click buy now and go through the checkout process. And once you have your HDR environment background texture downloaded, go over to the world properties once again. And this is where we change the color to environment texture. And there's a button here that says open. So go ahead and click that button and navigate to your environment texture. I chose to use Canon because I personally really like how that one looks. Now you can already see that the lighting looks really, really good and it looks really realistic. However, everything is white and it kind of all blends in. So let's add a material or we can just change the material of our default cube. So select the cube and then go to the material properties. That's, this, uh, that's the red ball right here. And we can change the base color to whatever you want. I'm gonna do an orange color and then make it a little bit darker. And you can even change how metallic it is. So I can make it more metallic so that um, changes. There's a lot of theory behind how light bounces off of an object um, that I'm not gonna get into. But um, yeah, you can make it more metallic and you can even change the roughness of the object. And there's a bunch of other settings, but usually I just stick with metallic and roughness. Um, but you could really do a lot with Blender. It's, as you can tell, there's tons of features and you can really spend your whole life just learning Blender, basically. So now that we have the HDR environment texture loaded, we don't really need our original light anymore. So let's go ahead and delete that. And I'm going to create a, another, actually, I'm just going to duplicate this uh, cube by pressing Shift D and then moving it over here. And I'm going to change this to a blue color. 
Okay, now because I duplicated them, the materials are connected. So to disconnect them, I'm gonna have to go to over here and click this minus sign, remove the material, add a new material, and now set the color to, this one will be the orange one, I guess, like so. All right, so to look through the camera's view, press zero on your numpad. And to move the camera around, we could go into the camera properties and uh, check a certain checkbox. So click camera up here to select the camera and press N on your keyboard to go to the object, object properties. Now go to view and select lock camera to view. Now we move our scene or uh, use the mouse to move the scene around, we're actually moving the camera. And we could pan, uh, the normal movement commands, but now we're moving the camera. So I'm going to extend this, or actually I'm just going to move the plane a little bit over there. Actually, not like that at all. Move it along the floor plane. That way, none of the environment is shown in the back. And you can actually turn off the environment as well if you don't want to see it, because it doesn't really matter. We don't really want to see it. We don't want it to to be like on this random hillside. That's kind of weird. So we're going to uh, click on the render properties and go all the way down here to film. And you could check this box for transparent. So that turns off the picture of the HDR lighting, but we're still left with the actual HDR lighting. So that's really cool. So now you could render, you know, even without a, um, a floor plane and you still get the nice natural lighting on your objects. So let's say we wanted to render these two objects here with a transparent background. We could go to the render settings, right here, render settings. It's like a picture of a printer printing out a image. That's kind of what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be uh, rendering and printing out our image. And we can set the file format to PNG. And the output right here, it's important to set the destination. I'll set mine to my desktop and make sure it's RGBA. So the A stands for the alpha channel and that is the transparent part of the image. So if it's set to RGB, you won't get the transparency. So make sure it's set to RGBA. And you can even change the resolution. And now finally, when you're ready to render your image, simply go up to render right up here and then click on render image. Actually, but before that, we need to make sure we have our render settings set properly also. So we go into render here and down here is our render uh, sampling properties. And it might look different because this has been changing a lot for all the different versions of Blender, but we'll want to change the max samples. This is really high. 4096 is extremely high. I'm going to go down to 64. Basically, the higher that number is, the longer it'll take to render. So 64 is pretty good. And we can set denoise if you want. You can see right now in the viewport, there's some noise, but if I click this button here for denoise, you'll see now the viewport is denoising. It'll look a little bit more unnatural, but it'll not have noise, obviously. So I'm gonna leave denoise checked because it will make it look smoother in the end. Okay. Now, finally, we can go to render and then click render image. Okay, so you'll notice the plane is showing up. Now that is because we just, or I just, um, I turned the visibility off on the plane, but this little camera icon here uh, is basically saying to continue to render that. So if I uh, press that, now you can see the camera has a little X on it that means it won't include that object in the render. So now, once again, click render image. And now we have the transparent background. So it looks like this will take about 45 seconds to a minute to render. And you can see the samples counting up here. Basically, the more samples, the higher quality the image will be. You'll also see, if I look closely here, the resolution isn't quite high enough on that bevel. I should have added more segments. And you'll see the final denoise. Boom, there's the denoise right there. And there we have our really natural looking render of these objects. Simply go to File, 
and then click save to save your image.